So certainly if you can zap solutions to be able to make metals, it would be really cool to be able to know how long you have to zap it for and how much current you have to apply to be able to make X amount of your product. So what is really important in this course of studies is to be able to determine those quantities. And there's a formula that you can use. You can use a formula or you can just understand certain things about the formula and you can do everything in one line of stoichiometry. We'll do one of each of those types and see which one you prefer. A solution of copper 2 sulfate is electrolyzed for 20 minutes with a 2.0 amp current. Now we're not dealing with volts here. Volts is just that potential difference. It's, kind of, it's really the thermodynamic driving force that sends electrons from one thing to another. And it's got its calculation um, um, issues that we'll talk about later. But right now, if we want to know something about current or how many electrons we need to be able to do a job, yeah, current or amperage is what we want because that's really charge per second or coulombs per second and coulomb is a unit of charge. I know that there's a lot of physics stuff there. What you need to know is essentially what I'm going to show you in the formula coming up. So, calculate the mass of metal produced. So what you need to do is first, you've got this chemical, copper 2 sulfate. So what's your list of chemicals here? You know that it's the Cu2 positive, SO4 2 negative, because it's ionic. You break it down into ions, and water's in your list. Now, we're talking about the metal, and we're only concerned about the metal. So you know what? I don't even write a net reaction here unless you're asked to do it. But what I do is I look for this, I find that, and that, by the way, the copper metal here is going to be the SOA. And so, so that's the SOA, the copper metal. Uh, well, the copper ion is the SOA. And so here is the half reaction that has the copper ion in it to be able to form the solid copper. And we want to know the mass of that produced. Well, what we really need to know is, well, is there information here that can give us the moles of electrons to be able to find the moles of the copper and then the mass of the copper? You betcha. And it's all locked up in the time here and the current here, which is in coulombs per second. So, and by the way, coulomb is a unit of charge for, for the electron. So, uh, for, uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to utilize a formula to be able to do this calculation with this half reaction. Now, what is that formula? Well, the number of moles of electrons can be calculated by multiplying current, which is I. Don't ask me why. It just is. Uh, times the time, which is T, that makes sense, divided by an F. Look, I wrote that F. It's a written F kind of thing. I like to write it like that. You can write whatever you want, but that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's Faraday's constant in honor of Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday is probably the greatest, if not the greatest scientist, the greatest chemist of all time. What an absolute hero. This man, uh, absolute genius, and in terms of understanding electrochemistry, Boy, he did a lot for this world. We wouldn't have, well, maybe somebody would have come along later and been able to show us how to make batteries and stuff, like Volta did, uh, Alexander, Alexander Volta. But, uh, but Faraday was the man who put everything together in such an elegant fashion for us to be able to have the modern world that we live in today. So, um, his constant, by the way, Faraday's constant, is equal to 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs of electricity per mole of electrons. Hey, now here's the deal. Um, that number has to be given to you to be able to do these calculations. So if you want to memorize it, that's fine, but you'll always have it in a data booklet or a chart somewhere to be able to utilize. If not, just given to you right in the question. Now, what we're going to do is this. We're going to take this formula, we're going to take this information here, current and time, with Faraday's constant, find the moles of electrons, and then calculate the, the copper. So uh, the mass of the copper. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the numbers here and you're going to plug them into this formula. So the number of moles of electrons is going to equal, now it's 2.0 but here's why I like to do it because if it's a written response part of the test you want units to cancel and amperage really is coulombs per second. Why did I do that? Because I have to take the 20 minutes and then turn it into, there's 60 seconds in one minute and it's all divided by 9 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs per mole. Coulomb. In honor of Coulomb, who figured out this, the, what, what the unit of charge was on uh, electron. So, uh, now when we take that information, we're going to get a number. 
That's not going to be the answer, but it's going to be close. You plug all that in, you're going to get this number of moles. Moles of what? Moles of electrons. It's not the moles of copper. So you have to now take that out and do a little bit of stoichiometry. Here's where that comes in. So you take that 0.0248 moles of electrons and recognize that there's a moles of electrons to moles of copper ratio here where you don't want moles of electrons, you want moles of copper. Look at that beautiful ratio and look at that cancellation. It's absolutely gorgeous. You know, actually, there are criticisms to this method of doing this because people say, well, you know, there's no real equivalency here. This doesn't really equal this, and you can't really say these types of things. And, and you know what? That's just a bunch of eggheads who really actually want to do everything in terms of calculus and not in terms of logic. So here's the thing. This is a beautiful method. Use it. Now, hey, and, and by the way, if you're an egghead and you didn't appreciate that, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just trying to get the most people through chemistry with, with the most logical way that we can actually help students to be able to do the best job possible. That's all I'm saying, okay? And I think this is best. You might have your opinion. I got mine. Let's see who wins. Now, take this, <laughs> moles of electrons, cancel with the moles of electrons here in that 1 to 2 ratio, obey that, and then, of course, you got moles of copper. And I want the moles of copper. I want the mass of the copper. There's the molar mass of the copper, 63.55 grams per mole. And you're going to get, hey, listen, I'm going to keep two significant digits in the end because that was 2.0 amps up here. I know I didn't keep my sig digs here. I waited till the very end to get my 1.6 grams of copper. So that's a little bit of a question how to do it with Faraday's constant.